So we're talking about more loops and um, let's just kind of hop right into it. We saw, well, we're talking about more for loops specifically. And we saw in the previous video kind of a first look through how for loops work. And now we're going to use them again with a little more detail going on. So what I've got right over here is my good old cat from some previous stuff where, let's see, I, sh I guess I should say like this is the head. These are the ears, I think. This is what left ear and right, right ear. Um, you can see right over there. And nothing's happening except for when I click on mouse press, then I will draw a cat head at the mouse X and mouse Y coordinate. And I pass it an X and a Y and it uses the X and the Y, uh, maybe editing X minus 20, X plus 20, Y minus 15 or Y minus 25 to put everything in the right spot. And whenever I click, boop, boop, we make a cat head at the location of our mouse. This is nothing new. This is old news. What I want to do is every time I click, I want to make three cat heads at my mouse or like around my, my mouse. Now, you could, you could say, all right, well, I'm mouse press. I'll draw the cat head and then I'll draw the cat head again at mouse X. And I guess I'll just do plus, let's see, my radius here for the head of this cat is 30. So from the center out to the edge would be 30. I want another 30 so they're not intersec intersecting. So if I do plus 60 and then mouse Y, now every time I click, this will create two cats, one at my mouse, one 60 to the right, right? This is, look, 59, 60 to the right, 119. Great. Um, and if I wanted to make a third cat head, well, I could just do this again, right? Draw a cat head at the mouse X plus, I guess another 60 would be 120 and the mouse Y. And now we'll draw three cat heads every time I click. More cats, right? Now, if I wanted to do this where I got like, I don't know, eight cat heads, I could, I could just do this eight different times. And you know what? For a simple program like this, maybe that's the way you want to do it. But the issue becomes there's going to be a point in time in our programming careers where you're going to want to do the same thing with just a slight change, right? Plus 60 and then plus another 60. Uh, more than just three to eight times. You might want to do it a thousand times. Even like 20 times is too much for you to bother typing out. So this is why loops are important. And the only reason you might say like, oh, why does this loop even matter? Is because I'm trying to keep the example simple enough for you so that we can kind of like actually understand how they're working. Once you understand loops really well, then you can start using them for all sorts of complicated stuff. So let's say, all right, I don't want, I don't want to bother writing these three lines. Or I don't even want to bother writing six lines to draw the three cat heads. Here's where you can use our newly learned for loop to get it done. And in fact, I'm only ever going to have to call it, call draw cat head once. We're just going to have to think a little bit more about how this mouse X works. And then also, of course, I'm going to have to make a for loop. So I'm going to say for I in range, right? This is always how we start our for loops. And at the start, I wanted to make three cat heads. So I'll say I want to do it three times. For I in range three, we will draw a cat head. Now, if I just do it like this and I don't edit my X or my Y to move the cat to the right or to the left or up or down, um, every time I click, it will loop through three times, but the cat heads aren't changing, right? Every time I run through the loop between lines 11 and 12, it's just using mouse X. So every time I wanted to add 30, and this is where, hey, guess what? Algebra was actually useful. Oh my God. Uh, we've seen a lot of math actually be useful in this course so far. This is where I need to think, all right, every time I wanted to add 30. Well, so I could say, all right, I'm going to do the mouse X plus 30. And I'm actually going to multiply that 30 times I. Because I know that I, when I do it in a range of three, is I'm going to start I at zero. So mouse X plus 30 times I, well, 30 times zero, it'll just be my mouse X the first time through. The second time through, ooh, sorry, it should be, we were going by 60s. Um, the second time through, it'll be I is equal to one. So then it'll be mouse X plus 60 times one. Well, guess what? That's mouse X plus 60. And the third time through, it'll be mouse X plus 60 times two, which is that 120 that we saw before. 
And if I run it now, just those two lines of code will make my three cats. And a really nice thing about this is before, right, I had to draw a cat head every single time I wanted to do new draw cat head. Now that we have the power of loops, we can do that um, just with these two lines of code. And you're like, okay, you only saved, you know, one line. I could have done draw cat head twice. But let's say something, that re something requires me to draw the cat head eight times. Well, guess what? I just changed my range from three to eight. And if my loop is, you know, looking good, it's going to make all the cat heads. It's going to make eight whole cat heads for me automatically. They don't even fit on the screen. Um, so now I got two lines of code doing what would have otherwise taken me eight lines of code before. And now if I got something smaller than these cat heads and they're not coming off the screen after eight and I want to make a hundred of them, I'd rather use a for loop. I don't know about you. I would rather use a for loop and understand how that works to get that job done, get it done in two lines as opposed to the hundred lines you'd have to do otherwise. Um, not to mention if you want to change something, like maybe I'm okay with these cats overlapping a little bit. Now, before, I would have had to change it, you know, oh, crap, I'm not going by 60s, I'm going by 50s. Well, I would have had to change all the 60, 120, 180, blah, 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 by five for every single one of them. Now, if I just want to go by 50s, I'll just change that multiplier to, to 50, and now the cat heads, they're going to overlap a little bit. They're getting a little cozy here, you know? Um, so I hope that that was valuable. Uh, notice, right, we didn't do multiple lines here. Maybe maybe, maybe I could do that just to end this off. Uh, notice, though, that we did, inside of my for loop, call another function higher up in the program. Um, your for loops can also have multiple lines in it. So I could potentially uh, create a label at uh, that prints out the value i, and I'm going to put it at the this same coordinate over here, mouse x. At mouse x plus 50 times i, um, and then I'll do mouse y minus, let's say, 40, just so that I'm going a little bit above where I clicked it. And this should over here now draw the cat head, and then just draw a label for the number of cat uh, above that cat's head. So let's see if it works. Boop. And look at that. We've got cat 0, cat 1, cat 2, cat 3, cat 4, cat 5. You can do multiple, multiple different things. They don't even all need to, well, yeah, you can do multiple things inside your for loop. It works just like an, um, an if statement, right? Anything above the for loop, unindented, well, you know, not indented into the for loop, that is outside of the for loop. It only happens once before it. Anything below the for loop, like this right here, um, this is not inside of the for loop because it's not indented. So just like your if statements, um, it happens only once you're done with that for loop. So this for loop will run over eight times. We'll pass through it eight different times. And then we finally get to line 16. Um, yeah, that's it. Another little example of for loops. And I think I want to come up with a challenge that has to use for loops now just to, um, you know, see some practical use for it. So hopefully that was uh, valuable. Hopefully it was helpful.